so because oh. YouTube is not is, is not still on. Who's not on? The YouTube channel is not is not on yet. Oh, not. Can make it on. They're right? trying. They're trying to make it on. It tells you still. Oh, you're taking for that. Okay. Sergio, YouTube's on now. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Done? It's on, right? Yeah, yeah, we can see kind of a zoomed in on the perfect, perfect. Um, memorial piece. All right, you can. So you can see the screen? So the auditorium, right? The auditorium, or side. Yeah, that's okay. Perfect. So you can probably speak a little low voice because it is picking up very high otherwise here. Yeah. Who is we talking? Vijay was talking. Vijay. Yeah, Vijay, you can speak a little lower voice. So that should be all right. I, I, I think it must be set for very loud well there. Yeah, just talk a little low voice. This should be all right. We can, we can always lower the voice from the... Well, actually, we can go just lower here the voices hmm? after that. And we'll yeah. This, that goes through here. No, that's okay. Just leave it. They don't disturb anything right now. No, but that is, that's better, though. Don't worry. Uh, it's the business. The huh? owner has to work the way so much more around the screen. So we're not doing them for you. Yeah. I'm removing it. Just a little bit loud voice. That's all right. Yeah, but that's... The, the YouTube, you YouTube link is working now. Right? That's okay, that's all right, we'll take care of it. Sorry, excuse me, ask. MS Team may or device to connected me, you know, any any device over the device to connected me, you know, MS Team is laptop, you know, half the price. So you're connected, I guess, mobile over it. Go connect to MC over there, and the loop and there. Same meeting you connected. This one? Basically, the MS Team ka jo meeting sent by us. जो हमारे साइड में है वो इस लैपटॉप पे कनेक्टेड है तो वो इसके ही कनेक्टेड होना चाहिए तो वो डिवाइस कनेक्ट हो आउट नहीं चाहिए कुछ नहीं मेरा पावर पॉइंट इसमें ही कॉपी कर दो हां जी सर तो आप मोबाइल से तो कनेक्टेड नहीं है ना वरना फिर वो लूप बन जाएगा सर जी ओके स्टार्ट है वेट वेट फॉर इट नो थैंक यू You can uh, switch on the, uh, the stage light, probably. You can make the stage light on. Stage light on, go there. I will. I will present from my presenter. I'll just present here. Yeah. स्टेज का लाइट ऑन कर दो स्टेज का लाइट ऑन कर दो बाद में वो बाद में करेंगे इसे प्रेजेंट कर अभी स्टेज का लाइट पूरा ऑन कर दो Work, sir. Go back already. Okay. We're started.
paragraph tells that let us take a moment to remember Professor Balakrishnan, or popularly known as Balan here, Balakrishnan's out from Balan, in the US is popularly known as Bala. So if you tell Dr. Bala, everybody knows about it. But if you hear, come here and talk about Dr. Bala, the people look at it, they, they know him as Balan. Probably he wanted to be treated that way. So for not, let's take a moment uh, to remember Professor Balan for not only his scholastic and intellectual achievements, but also for his very positive spirit, empathetic leadership, and enormous legacy for the university that he leaves behind. So this, with this, this motivation, we are all here. We'll just take you through some of his uh, little bit earlier work with all of us. We have been very fortunate, both of us were the students uh, with him at the same time. I was doing my PhD and he was doing master's there. And then we have got some of the students who are joined online, and they will also talk a little bit of their story. Their family members are there, their two sons, they are also participating online. They will also speak a little bit. And then, thanks to all of you who are joining virtually as well. So before we go along, uh, before we go do further things, it is very first thing that our, our uh, kind of uh, obligation or duty as well to pay homage to Dr. Balakrishnan. And I invite all of you, whoever is interested, to come on the stage and offer it uh, two petals of flower to, uh, to his portrait. So let me take the honor of initiating that probably. Thank you. You can come along, whoever wants to come. Whoever knows him in person probably maybe would like to volunteer. You can come from that side as well. I mean, that's closer. <laughs> you can come as well if you want. There are two second generation students here, student of the student, I mean, student of the student. Here, the, they are two of my own students, basically.
Uh, thank you for all that. Uh, I think we we'll get, uh, get started with uh, the formal part of it. Uh, of course, there will be a lot of uh, I mean, emotive statements and all sort of memories, uh, memory and all sort of things. Uh, but all the same, we don't want to kind of keep on doing that for a long time. It will be a mixture of remember. Rather, it is a good, good occasion to remember the good part of it and then cherish some of that rather than getting too sentimental. We all miss him, obviously. We miss him, we miss him very badly. We have fond memories. We have got very emotional memories as well. Maybe some of that we'll also share. Uh, but uh, we'll not uh, get carried away too much of that. Uh, but essentially, we have pro programmed it in such a way that you'll, give a, you'll get a glimpse of his entire life and some, some, some I mean, talks for, for his family members and all that. He has compiled a nice set of uh, photos, videos, and all sort of things that will also go through. And also part of that, we thought it's a technical conference, so we'll give a very superficial or global overview of some of his work. Yeah, I was very fortunate to work with him, something called adaptive critics, so Minj is there, we'll talk about something else. So at least two half an hour talks, you'll see a very global overview without too much of math and all that. We'll take you through some of this so that you'll have some idea about what we did there and what we carried out further after, after coming back from there and all that. So with that, I will hand over to Sergio, he will take it over. I will come back a little later. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me back at in Teams and in YouTube? VJ? Yes. Perfect. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, Roger, VJ, Karthik, Baba, thanks a lot for being there. Uh, a lot of the students, which basically, you know, Mbala, the, most of them are going to be there. I'm Thanks, most likely with some of them due to the time difference. They're going to be watching this afterwards. Thanks for uh, a coach for offering this session. Thanks, Dr. Pari, brother uh, for me to to prepare this presentation. When he talked to me, uh, Dr. Pari, about a year ago or a year and a half, and, and suggested me the the making a special session uh, to honor uh, Dr. Balakrishna, Bala, uh, say, sure, mm -hmm, I, I would love to. He, he said, well, you're going to try to help also with the conference. I thought, well, that, that's not going to be too much work. That's OK. And still, it's, it's been a, a nice pleasure. This is my second conference. And when I started looking at the presentation, I faced a problem, which was basically the, the, the as a, a problem that we face a lot of uh, professors, which is the white uh, the empty page syndrome. You don't know where to start. And it's been a lot of time, a lot of weeks, a lot of months. Just got information, but I didn't know how to start, how to handle this. Uh, for me, Bala was really a special person. Uh, all that I, I am as a professor, as a person, I owe to him. I'm not going to dedicate that to me. I'm going to dedicate it to, you're going to see, all those people that he touched. So I'm going to divide this presentation in three parts. One is the family. In Spain, we have a saying that we say that there's three types of families. The family you're given, where you're born. Uh, the family that you choose, which is the family that you build. And then this is the family that you touch. The, those that actually are uh, uh, gracious to have found somebody, and that's the case. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to start talking a little bit about Bal. I will talk about the, the Gil family. Uh, Bal was born in 1946, Mulai. But, uh, sorry if I don't pronounce correctly the names. Um, he attended to Madras, Madras Institute of Technology in the 60s. Uh, and then he started working for the ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, he was really, really proud. Can you hear sound? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of mic issue. So. Oh, because it's, it's on, it's on. Perfect, better now? No, no. Talk a little closer. Okay. No, not that. This you can use. Okay. okay. And we'll transfer later to the other. Not everything. I can use this mark if you want it. And you can leave to keep this one. Yeah. 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 So, as I was saying, you know, he worked at the, well, I'd say it was, he, was he, he was born in 1946, attended to Madras Institute in the 60s, and he worked in the ISRO, which is the Indian Space Research Organization. He was really proud that he was one of the persons that was working in the first Indian satellite that was launched. Uh, then in 73, he left the United States to get a higher education, 
uh, he was the first member of his family to go over there. Uh, talking about the family of Dr. Balakrishna, of Bala, uh, it talks, means talking about Shiv Nadar, which is his brother. And, and I'm mean, sharing a couple of images that were shared by the, by the family, where you can tell that they were really close and, and they had a, a highly respect for each other uh, for what, what they accomplished. Uh, they did a lot of trips, they did a lot of things in common, so that's something that is really nice to, to, to remember, to have both on, on, on mind. Uh, as I say, first is the family that you're giving, and then you go to the family. that you choose, okay? Uh, when he went to the States, he attended the University of Texas. And while he was there, he got married with Roger, Dr. Roger, who joined him in, uh, in Austin. Uh, we can see here some of the pictures uh, while they then being married. Uh, after he completed his PhD in 83, he joined the University of Missouri Rolla. For me, it's still hard to say ms &T, which is the Missouri Science and Technology Center, which that's when it changed the name. Uh, but he joined it in, in 1985. Uh, he has, uh, in 86, BJ was born, which is the oldest song. In 88, Karthik, we have BJ right here, Karthik, and then Baba will see that he was born in 97. The, the, the important things and something that the family really shares is during all that time, during basically the early the 90s, they were basically trying to raise the kids while being apart because Roja was completing her medical school uh, and her residency. So that means that a lot of times, Bala will spend six hours driving to get and join them uh, to spend the time. Uh, some of the things that some, somebody, that some of the people that know him, they know, they know that Bala loved to drive, loved to listen to music while he was driving. So it's probably one of the things that actually he got that uh, feeling of, I love to drive because I'm going to see my family and spend time with them. Uh, the family reunited in Rolla around 92. Uh, and then I have some pictures of him with uh, Roja, soulmates forever. Uh, they, they used to do a lot of trips to a lot of the conference. Bala, it's something that he would love uh, to go to the conference with the students and also with, with Roger. So we have some, some pictures here of, of them doing a lot of traveling. Love you, Roger. His major achievements. Uh, we're not going to be talking about uh, some of the, of all of the work that you might know that Bala has done over the years. We'll have later a slide with some comments from some uh, people, renowned people that actually recognize him. For him, his major achievement was his sums. He was really proud of them. Uh, we have here in a Christmas, and the previous one is uh, looking at the Blue Angels. Uh, so here it is. Now, as I say, there's three types of families, okay? The, this is the first two. Uh, well, before that, actually, also talking a little bit about uh, some of his achievements in, in Rome, the community, and then they, he's not well known for that. He donated uh, the, uh, and board member, he was a board member of the Domestic Balloon Shelter. Uh, he launched a lot of programs for disadvantaged students there in Rolla. Uh, and then he was named Curators Professor at the MST in, in 2010. Uh, he served as a faculty of the Senate in, at the MST, and he was president of the Faculty of Senate uh, of the MST in 2012. Uh, he was then back uh, uh, pro-chancellor of the SNU, and he became chancellor here at this university in 2014. Uh, I found a nice video uh, of what Bala was really, what, as, what was their modus, their, 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 their way of living, uh, and of how he saw not only education, but his life. And I'm going to share it with you. University, a student centric, multidisciplinary, research focused university. And what is student centric is we will do all we can to equip them to let their imaginations fly, come up with the best solutions possible to the problems of today and tomorrow. And when we say multidisciplinary, it is no longer the world is just, uh, you can find solutions only in one area. There are a lot of them are interconnected. And we want to expose them to different areas. And the research also it will be the best when you draw the best ideas from different fields. 
that's why it is multidisciplinary. And of course, research focused is there are, you cannot be static. What is research? Research is one, going deep into it. Second, finding new solutions, finding different, more efficient solutions, finding non-existent solutions. That is discovery and innovation. And that is how we can make contributions to society. And the university is basically meant for that. When we say we are a national university, we look at the needs of the country and problems. And with these focus areas, okay, in these disciplines, uh, we think we can offer better solutions, better students who will come out and excel. He was really proud of, of his heritage, I mean, and an Indian. He, I, I'm, I'm, I know that with all the students I've been talking to, that he will, will have a lot of talks about how India country was going and what could actually be done to, to improve the country. That's one of the reasons why he came here at, at, at Chief Nadar University. Uh, there are just four uh, small comments from some of the professors that I've been contacting over the last years. You might know some of them. Paul Werbos, Jerome Bosmeyer, Don Bunch, and Ajay Dandekara, professor here at the SNU. Uh, I'm just going to read them, okay, because they may be too small. Uh, and it's just a small part of the large message that they sent me that I'm going to share with, with Roger and the boys. Uh, Basmeyer, uh, he said he was a very creative scientist, open-minded, broadly interested, yet able to penetrate the topic very deeply. He was a wonderful collaborator and a dear friend, and I miss him deeply. Paul Werbos, Bala was an important part of my life for many years. My first contact with him and my last were both very memorable and very special. I often think of him and also of how much we lost with his death. His work was of serious global importance and I work hard to give it the greater recognition it still deserves. Don Bunch uh, at, uh, wrote me, a, uh, gave me a, a part of the, the recommendation that he gave uh, as a creator's professorship and some of the, the lines that I thought that were important is, Professor Balakrishnan is currently the most accomplished contributor to intelligent controls in the entire UM system. I have built a large part of my own reputation in this field and have a tremendous respect for several other colleagues working locally in the area. So do not make this endorsement lightly. He was consistently a kind and wise colleague. I think of him, of him frequently and I miss him deeply. And Ajay Dandekar, with whom I have a talk uh, like yesterday, uh, he sent me this message. It is still unbelievable even after some years have passed that he is not there anymore. I do miss him, his gentleness, curiosity about life, and genuine friendship that he offered to me. He was a proud, self-made man, gentle, and with a great sense of dry humor. A part of me did go with him. Let's continue with the family that you touched, which has done something that a lot of the, 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 the persons that, in this case, the, the students, master students, PG students, that we were lucky enough to, to be touched by him, um, we built Another family. We were not just students. Uh, we were not just people doing research. Uh, Bala was a really uh, mm, mm, harsh person when we come to, to research, and we will definitely probably half a call on Saturday and Sunday. We knew that something was going on. But when we walk inside of his house and we try to talk to him about research, he said, No, this is my house, this is my family. We're, you are my family, and we're going to enjoy our time. So I'm going to share some of the images. But before that, let's talk about the, 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 the PhD students. This is a list, and that's 14 plus 3. I will let you know. But it's just to let you know that there's a lot of PhD students. Uh, and these are a picture of, of some of the students. Dr. Pat is here. Dr. Mim will be talking with here. And then we have a series of PhD students that we've been talking. Ji is connected. I think as Sao Nishan as well, connected online. Uh, he's right here. And I'll talk a little bit about the last three students that they didn't couldn't defend the, the thesis with Bala alive, but they did defend it uh, with some of professors, but under Bala's still was within their hearts. Uh, talking about the master students, there's a lot of more. I'm not going to get into detail. There's too many. Uh, there's about 41 master thesis he stopped in the, in, in the 2015. But I'm going to go back to the, to the important thing, which is the, the events. Uh, the, the, the first picture I have here is Dr. Uh, Paddy. Uh, uh, I think this was a, an accord like 12 years ago. Uh, receiving uh, some awards. 
And, and this is also at a cuts with uh, Sima and Uzri uh, back there. And I was actually uh, in, in really fortunate to be here with them. Uh, and the, the, the trend of the pictures you're gonna see, it's, it's gonna be really nice because there was always a PhD student connecting with the rest of masters. So you're gonna see always a link. Start with Paddy, then we have Minshin defended in, two, in 2002, and this is some picture of, of Dr. Bala uh, with his family. Uh, this is BJ, one of his sons, so he was also always sharing you know, the family with the family that he uh, touched. Uh, then we have, this is one of the events that we held, we held at his house. Uh, there's a lot of students we have here, uh, Karthik, BJ, Baba, uh, means means wife I mean, and and then we have here for some students with Anat Bala. Uh, then we have here uh, also the, the 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 place that his house was sacred to enjoy uh, family time. Um, uh, we have here the same the BJ and Baba. That's one of the important things is because BJ uh, Karthik, sorry BJ and Karthik, BJ Karthik and Baba they grew up with all these students. They were part of their family, and you will see that at the end of the presentation. Uh, we have here a lot of students, Prasan, Anad, uh, Desmin, BJ, Donshun, Bala, uh, Zongwu, that he will be doing to, uh, some talk later. So the next one will be was Zongwu. He defended his PhD in 2002 as well. Uh, for, look that I'm not talking about what they did or their thesis on. I think this is relevant in this session. Uh, I, I, Slide one picture, I'm gonna focus only on, 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 on PhDs, but I slide this as I was a master's student, I defended in 2002. Uh, he tried to keep me there doing my PhD, but I went back to, to Spain. Uh, but I, I was always fortunate, he always, always uh, would tell me that he wish, wishes that, that I was gonna, I, I would have stayed there doing my PhD, but I had to, to follow my, my, my dream, which my dream was try to be as close as I could to him because that was my, my, my mentor, the person that I would look up to. Uh, there was always conference trips uh, uh, and, and Bala will be always there most likely. The reason why he's not there is because he's taking the picture. Uh, then the next PhD student that I, I got pictures is uh, Nishan. And, and here we have some other students, Dave, Derek, Nishan. Uh, Min, he was doing his postdoc, uh, Valek, and then and Shiwa is here. Uh, that's the next one, Shua. I have a really nice uh, message from Shua for the family. She couldn't send uh, more pictures because of the restriction in China, but still, I'm really sure that, that she is watching the, the, the event. Uh, then we got uh, Ji Ding, which is, was another of the PhD students, which she defended in 2011. Uh, then we have uh, Karthik. Uh, we have here Karthik with Manu. We'll, we'll, we'll see the, the, the next one. We have some other pictures of the presentation. So there's always, a PhD that will actually appear with the previous PhD. So there was a really light, a strong link between the PhDs along the way. Uh, then we have Manoj, which is the one that we used out here before with Karthek in the defense. So we, the, the one of the reasons that they make such a connection is because they will be sharing a lot of times together at the family. Uh, this is a, a really nice uh, uh, picture uh, uh, Manoj sent me, and this is a cool Bala's car. Bala had loved to drive, and that this is one of the cars that he was used to, to, to take. And we have here at, the, at Bala's house. Uh, and this is one of the latest pictures, because it's really nice, because we're gonna see some PhD students, uh, PD and, 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 and uh, Miriam, uh, with Abdul. He defended in 2020. Uh, and then this is the picture that's really nice. These are the last four PhD students that uh, uh, they were not able to do the whole uh, finish because uh, Dr. Bala was already on, 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 on the last part of his journey. Uh, we have here uh, Chris Nijang, who defended in 2021, Meriem, which defended in, in 22, and PL Debbie, uh, right here, which defended in, in, in 2022 as well. They all guided, despite that Bala was not there physically, uh, uh, he was there in their hearts and, and the work that they were doing. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just show sh some more picture of traveling, and I'm gonna jump to a special thing, which is we're gonna basically um, th the best people to basically tell who was Bala and what meant to them are the students.
Let me share a video. Give me a sec. Dr. Balakrishnan, it's been a few decades since I had the chance to see or speak with you, but I want you to know that you've made an incredible impact on my life. You were so much more than a mentor or an advisor. You also maintained that connection as a friend, and I hope you knew how much those small actions meant to me. Even today, I talk about UMR and the advisor there who helped me guide my thoughts when neural networks were still in their infancy. Thank you for showing me what it means to be both a great advisor and a great person. Dear Dr. Balakrishnan, I'm your student, Ming Xing. I was your PhD student from 1998 to 2002 and your postdoc until 2006. This was an incredible period of time I spent in Rala, and this was the time I shall cherish forever. I always told stories about you and me when we were doing research. My students were all highly inspired and motivated because of that. Your spirit as a dedicated mentor and an educator has influenced several generations of scholars. Thank you, Dr. Bala, my dear professor. I'm sure you will rest in peace in a universe where your scientific contributions were created. Dr. Bala Christian loved to spend time with his students to discuss research. I remember we discussed research in his car many times on his way to pick up his kids in the afternoon. I don't know if Dr. Bala Christian got more traffic tickets because of that. If so, sorry about that. Um, besides a professor, Dr. Bala Christian was also a proud father of three boys. Back then, one was his student. Now they are men. He did his best to spend time with his family. I was lucky to watch and learn that in those kids pick up slash research discussion trips with Dr. Bala Christian. I'm still benefiting from it today with my own family. It is hard to imagine that it has been more than 25 years since I had this luck to become his PhD student. Time flies, but whenever I think of Dr. Bala Christian, the first thing in my mind is his smile and excitement. Just as a big boy, when he was so into research and found something challenging but interesting. Thank you, Dr. Bada Christian. You will always be missed and forever be remembered. Dr. Bala made a very profound impact on my life. He was a great teacher and a mentor. and. Um, I was very pri privileged to work under him and he was much more than an advisor to me. Um, I looked up to him for uh, so many things. Um, of the many things he taught me, um, I can remember a few of them. Um, one instance when I was working on a project, uh, it was implementing a complex algorithm. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it was always complex. It was. Uh, it was nothing easy with him. Um, but um, the question I had back then was, uh, why are we doing something um, that will never see the light of day, especially because it did not have the computation power to deploy? His response was, uh, Vijay, we're not doing this for today. We're doing this for the future. And that still resonates with me. And um, that is something that I will always remember. Um, Dr. Bala, you will be missed very much and uh, will be always remembered. Thank you very much for being part of my life. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Bala. This is Prashant Prabhat. I joined your group uh, in 1999 and graduated in 2002. And when I defended my PhD thesis, one of the committee members uh, commented that he thought my master's thesis was actually a PhD dissertation. That's an example of how hard you pushed your students and to make sure 
they do their best. I really appreciate that because that helped me prepare for the future. As I have uh, continued through my career, you have always been a source of inspiration and so you have been very caring all along the way and providing encouragements. As I look at the advances in AI and the benefits of AI that the world is enjoying now, I feel that your research work was way ahead of its time. I would always remember you, um, especially my last email interaction with you um, when I got promoted and made a change in my career, I let you know and you had really encouraging words for me um, and you felt really proud. Uh, I really thank you for that um, and I'll always cherish you in my heart. Hello, my name is Nishant Unikrishnan. I was Dr. Balakrishnan's uh, PhD student at the University of Missouri Rolla between 2002 and 2006. Uh, hard work, dedication, commitment, and the determination to find solutions to any problem was always part of uh, Dr. Bala's DNA. Uh, his dedication to any work he did was uh, really, really incredible. I used to play tennis and racquetball with him very regularly. Uh, he even jokingly used to suggest that he's not going to let me graduate until I beat him in tennis. Uh, funny thing is, I never beat him in tennis. Uh, I visited the university uh, with my family. Uh, I had my two young daughters uh, with me at that time. I wanted to show them the university. I wanted to show them my, my advisor, my teacher. Um, Dr. Bala and Dr. Roja invited us to their house for dinner, and they both were excited to meet us, uh, meet, meet our family. Um, I, I actually felt very sentimental watching Dr. Bala interacting with uh, my daughters, entertaining my daughters, playing with them, and they were toddlers at that time. Uh, later on, Dr. Roja mentioned that uh, actually he had spent a large part of the day uh, that day or before we came dusting up, cleaning toys which were in his basement, uh, getting the toys ready for my children. This was actually a side of Dr. Bala I had not seen before. You know, I'd seen the man as a researcher, I'd seen a man as a, a you know, playing hard, working hard, but interacting with kids and uh, just it's something that I cannot forget. Um, all I can say is, you know, I'm blessed to have known him. Uh, I will cherish memories throughout my life. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to his family, Dr. Roja, Vijay, Karthik, and Bhava, for considering us to be part of their family. Hi, Dr. Bala. I still remember the big hug you gave me when we first met in Beijing. I still remember how much you liked the hot pot. And I... Of course, still remember how I lost your camera with all the pictures and videos you took at the Forbidden City and Summer Palace. I still feel terrible about that. Maybe that's why I was always afraid to talk to you. I can't tell you how appreciative I am with your support during my time in Rala. I was having some hard time at a point and I was even thinking about giving up on my PhD. You guide me through it. You may yell at me, but I know when I need help, you're always there. Thank you. I miss you. Dr. Bala, I'm Kartikeyan Rajagopal. I did my PhD under Dr. Bala from 2009 to 2014. Being the first engineer from my family, Dr. Bala provided me with a great opportunity to come to the US and pursue my PhD. I was shocked when I learned that Dr. Bala passed away. 2021 was an extremely bad year. Personally for me, a couple of months later, my mom passed away. Two of the most 
important people in my life are suddenly no more. I wanted to say to Karthik, Vijay and Vasant that I'm proud to say I am a student of Dr. Bala. On every occasion, I will remember him. Cherish my experience working with him and will always cherish his mentorship. Dr. Bala gave me an opportunity to be his doctorate student in 2010. He was a mentor, a guide, an inspiration to me. Uh, the first three years of my research were not so easy. They were full of hard work, struggle, exploration, and lots and lots of learning. Dr. Bala always pushed me outside my comfort zone. He guided me on the research track and always motivated me to go above and beyond. Um, overall, Dr. Bala's guidance has shaped um, not my academics, but also my personal and professional growth. Um, I'm deeply grateful to him uh, for his faith, for his trust in me, um, and giving me uh, the opportunities. Uh, and I sincerely thank him for all this, uh, the opportunities, support, and guidance over the years. Um, unfortunately, he's not here uh, to take my call, emails, but uh, he always stays in my thoughts. Um, I want to extend my deepest regard to Dr. Bala's family as well. And I really thank Dr. Bala for everything. Thank you, Dr. Bala. Thank you, Sergio. Oh, I hope I'm not too loud anymore. Is this sound okay? Oh, it's fine. Okay. Um, well, one, one, I wanted to um, extend obviously heartfelt thanks from us uh, to uh, to you for an incredibly touching and wonderful presentation. Um, all of the, you know, history of, of incredible students um, that uh, are, were part of his life uh, are attending now and, and kind of we'll, we'll watch it later. And, um, and also a special, um, extra special thanks also to Dr. Fuzzy for, um, you know, spearheading and pushing for this, I think, for, for a while now and making it a reality. And it's uh, incredibly um, touching for us. Um, as a family, and I think it's um, to me, it's it's wonderful to also just be able to see a lot of familiar faces again, um, because we grew up, as you can see in the pictures, um, you know, with all of the students as as kind of part of our family, and getting to spend time with everyone. Um, I think that really shaped also a lot of our interactions, and even you know, Sergio teaching us tennis uh, as we were growing up. Uh, dropping us off at the uh, the airport. Uh, I remember <laughs> uh, one of these days, a um, lot, of, lot of stories uh, with, you know, Minch and everyone, I think, um, and apologies for not calling everyone doctor. I think I'm used to just speaking to everyone in the shop and everyone just by first names. But um, I think this is, this is a great tribute. I think love that it's in um, this, this venue, um, which obviously kind of, he did um, love and play a part in, and I think it's a wonderful institution um, established by my uncle with 
um, you know, grand ambitions of, of doing things um, different and better. And I think that was the same vision that resonated with my dad. And um, I think Fadi mentioned at the beginning, just things focused on uh, research and really pushing the boundaries. That's, that's why my dad kind of went back, you know, you all know kind of his life and what he was dedicated to. And I think that was this, him working um, with Shivnagar University was his way of giving back. Um, it wasn't something he actually got paid for. We would always wonder, like, he was working two jobs. He would be working at MSNT. He'd be teaching a class. He'd be in faculty senate. Then he would be chancellor and also chose to teach the students at SMU. Um, and so I think it's just, it's wonderful to be held here. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it's, um, it's very touching for us to see this kind of outpouring of, of love and um, remembrance of everything that he did. And we do appreciate it and look forward to staying in touch with um, all of you even more. Yeah, can you, can you hear me okay, Sergio? Okay, great. Um... Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I would just echo what uh, Vijay was saying. I mean, really, a lot of nostalgia seeing people on the call and seeing some of the photos and the videos. And um, certainly the biggest surprise for me seeing these familiar faces, I feel like everybody I'm seeing looks exactly the same as they did when I was a little kid and you guys would come over to the house. So um, it's a pleasure to to see everybody. And, you know, I think the the whole tone of the the event and the presentation was very special the you know just as much as you know Sergio your words regarding family you know very much for us growing up the research group was an extension of our family and when you guys would come home you know you may have not noticed it but as kids we were very excited to have anybody from the group come home um and just participate and and engage with us and you know Nishant what you mentioned about our dad and your kids. I think similarly, we had that feeling whenever any of you would come to come to the house, and um, you all would go out of your way to spend time with us and, and make us feel like we were important in terms of conveying the important events in our life and in whatever grade we may have been. Um, you know, and just you the the folks out. Even I, I know there's a lot of intensity in the work environment and and the research goals. Um, obviously, because we, me and Vijay and Bob experienced that at home for our own homework and things like that. But um, I think the rewards and that were there, but what I loved is also engaging with the, the group in the non-work side. You know, I remember how many times we had Dr. Puddy's uh, Ruscula uh, talk to Sergio. You know, I would have never thought I'd be able to talk about Dragon Ball Z to somebody like Sergio, right? But he was willing to entertain us and hear us out. So just, uh, Loved, loved interacting with everybody throughout the years and really was really an extension of our family. And, you know, our dad lived and breathed his work. The thrill of a successful day of research when um, undoubtedly one, any one of you would have demonstrated some excellent finding. We could feel that at home when he came home. And, it, you know, when I applied to grad school in my essay, I actually described how, you know, Frankly speaking, I don't think I've ever been as passionate about work as he was, but I wanted to be able to find and mimic that feeling that I could see when he came from came home when something was going well in the research side of things. And I think that passion is something we all strive for. And, um, you know, it's fantastic to see students, colleagues really carrying that torch. And, um, you know, he would always emphasize to me, Vijay and Bhava, you know, you try to do the best job at whatever you're working on and also try to make some contribution to the world, just make it better in some, some form. And I think uh, it couldn't be more evident that the folks uh, in the session in the community, whether they're colleagues or students, um, you guys are making that true and, and really touches on, I think the mission that he drove home um, in all, all aspects of life. And, you know, he would try to be the best, whether that was in, research or some project, whether that was playing, you know, we heard about tennis, you know, same thing with basketball, racquetball, um, music, and, you know, appreciate the Fleetwood Mac there in, in 
part of the presentation. And um, I think the energy, it's it, really this event is about celebration. I think it's it brings a lot of emotion out, but I, there's so much positivity coming out of vivid memories of engaging with, with you all, at least the ones that we were fortunate enough to ma meet. And those of you that we haven't met, um, it's great to, to hear such thoughtful comments about him and just couldn't appreciate it anymore. You know, everybody that's participating and um, it, it means the world to us. Really appreciate it. To the other one. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sergio, for compiling all the information and taking through. So all the audience uh, got a very good glimpse of uh, both professional and profe I mean, personal life as well. And thanks, Karthik, for bringing out the, the, the Rasgulla story. And we actually learned a lot. Uh, in the US, you, are, you have to know cooking. And some of us kind of enjoy cooking in some sense. And then he was one of the my best customer in, in some sense, basically. Whenever I, I want to have something, he used to love it very, very much. In fact, uh, whatever you cook, I mean, I would make sure that uh, something or other, if it's special, it reaches him, basically. And in fact, uh, we are also late night workers. Sometimes he used to stay there and we to use some deep teas and all sort of things. And those things are fun, fun memories, basically. But a couple of things are also there, which I'll also talk along as we go along. The, there are fun times, there are serious times and all that. And then of course, uh, many, of, uh, many of the speakers told that when uh, you see him in the lab, or see him in, the, see in his own office lab or whatever, he's a very different person. And you have to go through that process. Okay, so that, <laughs> I mean, that is, that's a little bit hard, of course. And uh, some of that quality probably we have also picked up. <laughs> some of the students are here to tell that. <laughs> but having said that, when you come out of that, he's a pretty, pretty different person. And in fact, uh, there are so many things to kind of uh, remember all, all over the place, actually, that way. One of that comes to my mind is like, uh, whenever I was about to leave US, I mean, about, uh, so you have to sell it out, whatever cars are there, car you sell it out, whatever it is, little thing, whatever is there, there. Told so, one week we don't have a car, or two weeks or something, I don't know. So why are you worried about, take my car and use it, okay? So, so uh, almost like about three weeks. He just gave his car, that's how it is. He told, okay, fine, I, I thought out of courtesy, I just put a little bit of repair work or whatever. It was a little bit old car. But uh, towards the end, he told, don't, no, 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 we have to go somewhere out. This was only for the local use. And if you are planning to go meet some friends somewhere around 200 miles away, which is Kansas City, of course, I still remember that. So you, no, you can't take that car. Here is the one you take it, Lexus. Okay. So that was his, his most favorite Lexus car. And then I can't imagine that, okay, somebody just gives out, just to go and enjoy. I mean, go and enjoy for two days, that's all actually. So there are many, many things like that. I mean, of course, uh, Bijar, Karthik, Karthik told about uh, St. Louis trip. In other words, Rola and St. Louis are 100 miles apart. Uh, you have to go to the airport. And uh, the best way to wake him up, okay, in my view, is to talk a little bit against Tamil language. <laughs> okay, he's so passionate about Tamil. <laughs> And in fact, uh, the, he was dozing one day, and then I, I, to, I didn't find somewhere to wake him up because I was also feeling sleepy. So, okay, a little bit, a little bit excitation there, actually, right? What, what do you think about national language? I think it's Hindi. No, oh, that is, <laughs> the rest of the thing he never sleeps <laughs> that way. So there are many things like that, which is also both uh, fun and uh, another ways. In fact, one of the uh, pictures that you see for Sergio displayed in his home, uh, he was sitting on the floor, and the students were sitting on the sofa. Well, that, that is what takes, uh, speaks a lot, basically, right? Uh, that we don't have to tell on anything further. So the students were there on the day. He will not come and sit in front of one or, or in the sofa. He just take a seat right below the sofa, basically. So, that's, uh, <laughs> so there are many things like that. So let's not uh, kind of get carried away. Many, uh, all, all other things may come on the way. So let's get into a little bit technical talk part of it, right? Sergio, that's our plan, right? So we'll give you a glimpse of what we did and what extensions we did. Uh, and uh, all this uh, part, I mean, it's part and parcel of our journey, basically, that way. So let's get started. Okay, can, this will be a little bit overview, glimpse of uh, what have we done there, and then how, what we have done after coming here. PowerPoint is on. And thanks a lot, uh, Vijay, Karthik, Ming, uh, Farooq. Uh, I think uh, many of them I know. Nishant is there. I think Nishant, you can still remember. Nishant and me were the kind of PhD student. He followed it up where I left it. 
Prasant Pravat is there. He used to kind of come to our home as well. I mean, he was one of my uh, junior, but very good uh, colleague. He keeps on meeting us in Bangalore as well. Uh, so many things are there. Jungu is there. Uh, he was also part of the team and things like that. Okay. All right, so let's get started with a little bit of technical part. And that's, uh, this is a technical session as well. So we'll give a glimpse of, uh, I mean, glimpse of my work over there and followed uh, by after I came back, what we followed up. It's very big, very big superficial, not going to be too much mathematical, but control theory cannot be spoken without math. So a little bit of math may be there somewhere. Okay. So it is a tribute to Professor Val Christian, uh, who lived for about 75 years, and uh, in all global standards, including Indian standards, 75 is little too early. So that is, that is what we miss him, uh, and of course, uh, work will say for it. So this is uh, here in Simnath University. Uh, it is uh, right now thriving. In other words, about 10, 12 years time, the getting an institu institution of eminence is actually a very good, remarkable achievement. And that is the money can't buy too much. The money has a role to play, of course. They have also contributed a lot of infrastructure and other things there. But also, how do you make a program centric or centered about good people? How do you bring good researchers, good established professors? In fact, retired professors from IIT, IISCs are here. In fact, working professors from IIT sometimes leave and come and join here. That's, that's also there. <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry for that one. Professor Tuli is here, so he is a signing example of that. So that, that not only that, you can now think about graduates of very good, uh, graduates with a lot of good CV that probably would have joined IITs and all that could have come and joined here as well. So this is, this is the type of thing that we are talking about basically. And here is uh, known as uh, Balan, and uh, he's Dr. S. N. Balkristen, former chancellor. Uh, but from the very founding stone laying, he's, he was already there. And then until about 2018, he was there as, uh, formally. And afterwards, uh, he, he thought of disconnecting. Alright, so April 14 to uh, September 2018, something like about uh, four and a half years, he, he was the helm of the affairs. And then not only just a namesake chancellor, but he used to come about uh, three, four times. He used to stay there. There's a dedicated room for that in the guest house somewhere. I also came to know about that. And then he used to stay in the office for about uh, nine or 10 o'clock in the night. He used to take classes for the students. And after whatever portions are left out, he will go to US and take the remaining classes. And that was of dedication you can, you can see. Then all those of you who are part of that era, basically. I'll say some of them, Dr. Naveen is here probably, so he is part of that era. He has seen him so close, actually, that way. Okay. All right, so this is the place where he used to work. Okay. He used to learn, see, people talked about a lot of times you go to home to eat something. No, not really. A lot of times he used to walk on that to go to the cafeteria as well. Okay, so that's the lunch hour part, part of it actually. So sometimes they just take it out and then okay, just grab it and then go from here. This is the place we used to spend nights all together. Okay? So that especially is part of our journey. I mean, this is the place somewhere his office was there and somewhere on the upstairs our lab was there actually. That way. So this is, and then in front of that, if you go to the other side, there was the library basically. So that's the, that's the small university, but a very good memory that we have. In fact, not only Jin Ming, uh, I was also not only PhD, but two years of postdoc also there, same time, after, after graduation basically. So that's, that's, that's the story there. Okay. So this is, this is what you're talking about, and of course, a pioneer in all-in optimal control. So let's talk about that. Now, if, if you really talk about optimal control, these are the names that comes to mind. Okay. Not talk about Bernoulli, Euler, Lagrange, Newton, Gauss, Pantreazine, and things like that, basically, right? So these are the people which actually had some 1700s people, and then 200 years later, you will see this bunch of people out here. Okay? Why am I talking about that? I mean, this is the occasion. Okay? The question here is, does Dr. Walkristen has any connection to any of that, really? Okay? Now the question is, okay, now this is a Google time, so a lot of us have Google power, basically. You can actually do that guide genomics, basically. Like you go to your super guide and see who is his supervisor, who is his supervisor, and all that same you can dig it out. Okay? So if you do that, then this is the story that comes out. Okay? So his guide was Jason Spare, his guide was Bryson, the famous Bryson and Book, Bryson and Ho book, and then the Lipman war, and all that you go, you can connect it back to Hello Langrens. Okay? And then if you do another story, you can talk about something like that, back, 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 and you can talk about Gauss. And you know Gauss is a least square method and all that, right? That is, that is where the legacy con continues. And some of, some of us were very fortunate to kind of attach our name after that. <laughs> okay, right, okay, right. So that, that's the story. <laughs> all right, so now to come back to our thing. So when I went there, she was extremely passionate about something called adaptive critique. And I came from aerospace background and told her, oh, this is uh, somehow it doesn't kind of it excites me. So nothing like that, if you, I mean, this has to, this will excite you after you work some time. And then it actually happened to be like that. Okay, so after you walk to start doing, you don't know what is going on, and then slowly start getting something. 
but uh, he never set with us and then kind of derived everything or taught us or nothing like that. You see, this is a set, this is a previous work, you take it, you read, then figure it out, basically. And that is what a, a typical PhD should be all about as well. Okay? We do a little more than that for our students, but then uh, this is not uh, the, the way that he used to, used to train us, basically. So that also gives you a lot of self-confidence later, basically. Okay, that. All right, so this is what is called adaptive critic, and I will talk about that uh, a little bit more. What happened here? So why you talk about optimal control, by the way? Then optimal control you talk about, there are hundreds of applications that you can talk about, right? That's the, such a beautiful area, right? You can talk about you know, biomedical application, you can talk about Aditya L1 uh, kind of going on the orbit and keeping the station, you can talk about launch vehicle recovery, the way the space vehicle, SpaceX people do that, in fact, our ISRO started doing that. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, talk about fuel optimality, you can talk about robotic applications, you can talk about re-entry vehicles, you can talk about, well, some obstacle evidence guidance, all sort of things, basically. You can talk, you apply, apply that in flow control, you apply that in biomedical imaging, all sort of, basically. So there are so much of applications there, okay? Now, having said that, that uh, this application domain was well thought about. It's not that we say uh, long, we long, hundreds years back. Now, the question is why it was not so popular. Only now it's getting popular. That you'll see some of, uh, some of that in my afternoon talk. Afternoon also I've got a talk for, for an hour, basically. But then this is, the, this is the motivation for optimal control why so many people have worked on that, basically. That way. All right, now, mathematically speaking, it's again one or two more slides. So we talk about what? We talk about a system dynamics with, uh, with some sort of initial condition, final condition, maybe some ti final time is fixed, free, whatever it is. And then you talk about system dynamics, constraint to system dynamics, you talk about uh, kind of optimizing or minimizing or maximizing a cost function. That's all about that. And also we talk about sometimes something called no, constraint optimal control. In other words, if there are a bunch of inequality constraints, some of that. We are not talking about that. Okay? If you do that, then what happens here? It, uh, you land up with something. What will happen? Is some problem here? Some some connection problem? No, no, here, here. Screen is gone blank. <coughs> screen is gone blank. Ah, okay. Again, you have to start. Yeah, it's okay. Go to next seven, eight slides. Okay, fine. You can, can do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So why it is not so popular such a, such a long time? And then, of course, people have realized that, okay, the way you solve it is not really very benign. So you don't get to this so-called closed form control solution. So if you have a closed form control solution, an analytic, analytic solution, you can simply co compute it very easily and implement it. That's what the PID control and other things do that. In fact, a lot of nonlinear control theory based on the Lyapunov theory and all that have, have do that, right? And backstepping and other things there. But optimal control is not like that, okay? <laughs> oh, again, you have to start from that and then join through the meeting. No, is the meeting, are you people able to listen? Farooq, can you confirm? Meeting is out, looks like. Meeting you have to join back, right? Yeah. To join on the meeting, probably. Yeah. Just reset the meeting. What happened? Why this uh, computer? Just reset it for some reason. Okay, give a, give a little bit of break. Okay. By the way, he used to love my butter chicken, basically. That's, um, that's another thing. <laughs> butter chicken from, from us, I mean, not only me, I've, I've got a fantastic friend called Vikas Gupta. He, he settled in the US, and then he was the classmate in IAC, by the way. We are all together in, uh, in aerospace. He went there about a year back, but he did not join the same advisor. He was a different advisor. But he used to have a lot of fun time there, and he was a fantastic cook, by the way. So he motivated me a little bit for that, that part of the skill. <laughs> and he used to cook for 300 people, and it uh, almost like became 700, 800,000 people for Diwali and International Day occasions, basically. So those are some of the other things. And of course, he used to love the music as well. I mean, that's uh, another part of it. Uh, not, not only the, I mean, the Indian music, Indian, Tamil, Chinese, uh, English, whatever it is, actually. The moment it is very soft, soft to the ear, he will listen for hours, actually. That's, that's, that's another thing. Okay, all right, so good. Let's come back to this. this. The solutions is not really easy. The solution is actually the one that killed people for a long time. That means that we are all handicapped. We know the beauty, we can get the beauty, but solution, how do you know, how do you do it? 
that is why for a long time it was all offline solution, offline solution like trajectory optimization, right? You anticipate certain things in one month ahead, the, your launch vehicle time is so and so, you anticipate that and get a solution out of it. But then when you actually the time arrives, that may not be the solution, right? That's why you need a feedback solution, that, that, that didn't happen. So this is what you talk about, the solution part is either indirect or direct and then there's, so if you really go to the indirect approach, then you talk about, well, there's something called calculus of variations. It invariably leads to this 2-point boundary value problem and eventually what happens is you get into this open loop control and that curse of complexity. What about the other approach? You have, we follow this dynamic programming approach, which also again leads to this HJV equation, Hamilton-Jacobi-Wellman equation, all that, and that is also very difficult to solve and that leads to curse of dimensionality. So either curse of complexity or curse of dimensionality, either way you are caught. And then there's another one which talks about transcription method, it leads to this large dimension optimization problem. Computationally very slow, local optimum problems, okay, so all sort of other things can happen. So these are the bulk part of it. No matter where, whichever angle you go, you are stuck with these computational requirements actually. So that is where things started and then, then the question is, can we really think about solving some of these, at least a class of these problems in real time? very quickly. That means we are look, looking for almost like a closed form solution, basically. Something that is available. The moment I know state, I can feed it to the formula, the static formula, and get the control function out of it, okay? So that's the, that's the whole idea there. So the question is, can this computational difficulty be avoided so, so that it can be useful for real-time applications? The answer turns out to be yes, very, very fortunate. It all started almost after the World War II, basically, by the way. The first thing that comes to is LQR, as a lot of us probably know about it. So it's a very, very standard thing that we teach, uh, and then leading to that extension of that called STR and other things there. So that's the first thing that comes to mind, and then of course extension of that. And theta D method is a kind of a innovative way of solving the similar class of SDRE problem, which happens to be Zin Ming's thesis. Well, Zin Ming is here, basically. So Ming's thesis is all about theta D, basically. So that's the innovation that come out from the, this lab itself. And then we talk about pseudo-spectral method, and there are other things we talk about fast MPC, and part of that turns out to be, in our lab, we call that as MPSP, and then something called lossless convexification, sequential convexification, things like that. And this particular thing we'll talk about adaptive critic, which is typically a neural network based method. Okay? And the neural network, when you talk about, we don't talk about the current huge dimensional neural networks, right? CNN and all that, we don't talk about that. Okay, so the traditional conventional neural networks that we talk about. So let's go back to that. This is what you have. This is the problem formulation. And if you attempt to solve it, the indirect way approach will lead to, lead to some of these things. So you, you really talk about Hamiltonian, which comes from this L plus this uh, lambda transpose F. Lambda is a Lagrange multi, you know, it's a co-state variable. It's a function of time and it satisfies a similar class of differential equations. Remember, F is dimension of F and dimension of lambda are same. This is a scalar function, by the way. So essentially what you do is for an n-dimensional problem, you live, you will end up with a 2n-dimensional system basically. And that is still okay provided the boundary conditions are available at the same time. But that doesn't happen that way. If you really look at it, the state equation, bound initial conditions are available. The co-state equation, unfortunately, final conditions are available. And that's why something available here, something available here, n, n here, n here. The problem is how do you solve it? You can actually solve this uh, in some sense called suiting method, multiple suiting and all sort of things that way. So this is what the problem all about. It's called, uh, I mean, this is two-point boundary value problem. The reason being half of the boundary condition here and half of the boundary condition here. Well, I mean, how do, what's the ultimate objective? Well, wait, this is a static equation. This is, this is a del S by del U is a static equation. And you happen to solve this, eventually you're looking for a function, okay? So that function can be evaluated very quickly, provided these are all time varying by the way, right? X, X of time is coming from the sensor estimate or whatever it is, but what is what about lambda of t? That has to be coming from the other side of the story. And that actually happens to be the whole critical part of this solution game, basically. Okay? So now the question is, well, can we really do that? Now, the, we know that there exists a function, and now neural networks is all about function approximation anyway. Neural networks are used for classification or function approximation, right? So you need, uh, this function is something we know it exists, but you cannot uh, compute it, basically. So if you don't compute it, the next best solution is probably think about a neural network, right? Think about a neural network, which will actually approximate the solution in a good way, basically. That, that's the whole idea there. So people now coming back to discrete domain, the same discrete things can be thought about. This can be put in a discrete form. The only thing that you can, I want you to notice here is the lambda of t in continuous time is not equivalent to lambda of k. It's equivalent to lambda of k plus one, okay? That's the critical observation that you should have which is in, in optimal control. So what, what, other than that, it's all similar. So what you see here is x of t, lambda of t. So what you see here is x of k and lambda of k plus one. I want you to notice this because that happens to be one of my 
uh, entire ball game there later, basically. Okay. But initially, when you go there, it was uh, not that thought about there. So the, the, what we know there is a function. So the question is, can you get out of this? Somehow you get out of this, and then think about another function, which is a, only a function of xk. Can you think about that? The, the way to do that is, of course, you have to find out, figure it out a function between them, right? Between them, it is just be a function. Then only it's possible. So that is to motivate, I mean, to have this, uh, this superficial idea or the global idea part of it, you go back and think about what is neural network. Neural network is a function approximator or data classifiers, essentially. So you now think about uh, input as a state and output is something, okay? And that something can be the control function. Okay, that's something that output is nothing but the controller, basically. So if you think about that, then you lead to all sort of uh, kind of a theorem proof and all that. Let's, let's skip that part. So the question is, people have thought about it before I went there. So they talked about, well, it was just evolving, by the way. 90s ideas in both Paul Verbos and all that, right? From NSF and all that they talk about. So this is, they talk about one set of networks, which is SK to UK, another set of network to SK to Lambda K, and these networks kind of help each other, basically. So you go to neural network one, neural network two, train them separately, and then interact them, basically, right? So there is a whole bunch of mathematics to learn to get into that, basically, that way. But eventually, it is possible, not only the neural networks has to converse, but the cycle training has to converse as well, okay? If the cycle training has to go, because you train this one, assuming this is optimal, then you come back and train this one, assuming that is optimal. So you play around with this, with all these equations that we talked about, right? These three equations you play around. Okay, how do you play around? Let's, uh, let's keep that part of it, actually, that way. Okay, so when you do that, uh, then eventually you will get out the action net. Finally, you discard this. I typically, in my class, I talk that as something, most of the things like a curry leaves or, or chili or whatever, right? You put that in the, in the curry for a taste or flavor, but eventually you don't eat it. Okay, that, that kind of thing, right? So essentially, that you they throw it out and then take it as that is the function that you get it, basically, right? So all that is thing is that, so eventually that's, that, that's there. Now the question, the, we started doing that, got results, started publishing, but I thought, okay, after doing all these coding activities and all that, I thought it's probably something is missing here. That means maybe this much of complexity is not needed. Okay? Now, in that process of thinking, what we, what we kind of observed is, well, all this complexity is needed because you are now talking about xk to lambda k, whereas this control is a function of lambda k plus 1, right? So if I, and most of the times you see that this control function that you talk about here, uh, right? Uh, the control function that you are talking about here is actually explicitly available. Okay, right, R inverse B transpose lambda and all that. You can think about that that way. Those, those of you know that. So this is explicitly available. Now, if it is explicitly available, all that I need is a function between these guys, right? If I need a function between this and that, then I'm done because this function is explicitly available. Okay, like uh, size is available, basically. So then this is, this, is the core, this is the core idea of going into something we called it. We started the name called SAC, SAC SAC, Simplified Adaptive Network, Adaptive Critic. Somehow he didn't like it. So we told no, no, SAC is the, like sacking somebody from the job and all that, right? So we don't do that. We'll talk about snack. Okay, snack is like eating something <laughs> in the evening time. So we talk about, well, that is our something called the single network adaptive critic. In essentially, you are talking about this function will be a neural network, but after you synthesize this from a neural network, then this function is available explicitly. So it essentially becomes a state feedback controller, basically. That, that's, that's what it is. So get into that, and that led to a huge amount of uh, kind of uh, excitement and all that. Even now, people talk about uh, single network adaptive critic. One of the PhD students later from China happens to be centered entirely about this, basically. Okay, okay there's a loose connection here. What to do? The laptop, that's why I use my own laptop normally. <laughs> but then, <laughs> my own laptop is much better. Again, if you close, again you have to start from the beginning. It doesn't, it doesn't take that. It doesn't take that. This mouse key you take out, this mouse key, is it? This is key. Okay. Huh? Could I check that? What do you check? <laughs> okay, some other memory maybe, that's okay. Let them do that, let them fix that. Uh, so this uh, is this very emotional memory, by the way. And, uh, probably my family also doesn't know that, probably. That way. Or maybe she knows it, I don't know about that. So that uh, time of, uh, oh, okay, so that, let's keep that later. <laughs> okay, because we don't know when, when computer goes bad or something like that. Let's, uh, let's kind of complete this story and we'll see that. This is uh, too far ahead. So let's go back and, and then start from wherever it is. 
So we talked about single network adaptive critic, right? That's the whole idea. So we talk about one set of network, which kind of kind trains it, and then around that you can talk about uh, evaluating that, get it done. And this is actually solvable. So that means it retains all the advantages of adaptive critic, eliminates uh, eliminates one set of uh, one set of neural network is already gone. That means the cycle training requirement is also not there. Just train it one time and you are done, basically, right? That, that's the, the kind of simplification that we talk about there. So this is what we are talking about. Now this is the way that you talk about adaptive critic versus uh, single network adaptive critic. Again, there is some meeting problem. Yeah, sir. Just need to share this link. Huh? Just need to share this link. Ah, so you can put that up PowerPoint, no? Yes, okay, done. Can you people see it now? Somebody online, Farooq? Yeah. You can see it, right? Yes, yes, okay, yes. Perfect. So, all right, so this is this is what it is. So, we talk about now, see how complex it is. I mean, don't go through the equations, math, and diagram, and all that, right? Compared to this, now think about this. Okay? So, this is where you use this optimal control, state equation, co state equation, all the things are there in that picture. That way. The only thing is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, applicable for only those kind of problems for which you really know this explicit solution that we talked about, right? If you happen to know this explicit solution, in other words, psi function is known to you. For which happens like a, let me talk about this control f i in nonlinear systems uh, with quadratic cost function, which is a fantastic candidate for uh, SDRE and other things. It satisfies that basically. So that is that is that is what happens. Then we talk about that. Uh, okay. Can you minimize that? Yeah. All right. So this is uh, this is one of the things that he liked it very much. In fact, uh, we had published that paper way back in 2006. After the I mean uh, 2004, we started writing it. We solved a lot of problems around biomedical problem that we actually won some best uh, third paper award in one of those IEEE conferences. And the uh, fourth one was being MIT. He was very happy. The, the third for third paper was ours. And in fact, we happened to go to Mexico that time. We got newly married. And then at that, uh, that point of time, two days later, there was 9-11 attack. That's a different story, basically. We just came back to US. And then just about two days later, there was that. Anyway, so uh, now coming, coming to that, you see all these advantages. Let me not uh, dwindle on that. The comment is SNS is applicable whenever the optimal control equation is explicitly or rather symbolically solvable for control in terms of other one. Okay? So these are some of the references. And uh, you know, this is the first one that we're talking about, uh, 2006. But we started communicating by 2000, by the time I just came in and all that. I mean, left there and came in here, the paper was ready. And later on, we actually solved this, utilized exactly the same technique to solve this bio nice biomedical problem that happens to be one of our personal research right now. They, I mean, synthesizing artificial pancreas for automatic blood glucose delivery, even though we are not using this technique there. Okay, but then the person who actually worked, he is actually a full professor in IIT Madras, and he is right now online in the meeting, Dr. Farooq Ali. So he was actually a small duration of time. He was a postdoc in my lab also after graduating his PhD. The second problem that we talked about is this one, and he is also a faculty in IAC already. He is an associate professor in IAC in electrical department. Is, uh, we had done a lot of good work after that, but he, he, he got so much excited about this work, this type of thing that happened to solve this problem. And then he, his PhD story, in fact, uh, some of, he got his best PhD thesis award a little later, when he was gradu graduating from the department, actually. Anyway, so now coming back to other, other this is all this, uh, that, uh, that was summary of what is SNSC and all that. But my, my PhD topic was not really that, okay? My PhD topic was something on partial differential equations. Okay, the SNSC was a byproduct in the entire journey, basically. So then what you saw right now is all differential equation in the ODE sense, basically, right? But when you go to PDE sense, the things are very exciting, and there are so many applications here. Heat transfer, chemical reactor, vibration, fluid, and all sorts of things, basically. There. Now, if you really happen to see that, now how do you kind of see this control of distributed parameter system? Either you have to design then approximate philosophy or approximate the... First you design and then approximate, or you approximate then design, because ultimately the computers will talk discrete thing only, basically, right? Now this approach is more or less kind of mostly for linear PDs, and this is for mostly for nonlinear PDs. And later on we'll see that, okay, this philosophy can be utilized for a class of nonlinear PDs as well. Okay, that, that's, that's kind of thing. But anyway, so kind of coming back to that, if we talk about nonlinear PDs, where the finite difference, finite element, or eventually you'll end up doing something called Galarkin projection with orthogonal basis function using proper orthogonal decomposition, POD, which CFD people actually kind of fondly use it in many, many applications now. So that is the type of thing, a little bit equation again. So we now talk about partial differential equation, double integral now, one with respect to space, one with respect to time. And that depends on whether it is a 1D problem or 2D problem or 3D problem. This is actually a 1D problem, basically, right? Why is the scalar? So it's a 1D problem. And of course, you now talk about boundary conditions and all that that way. 
these are some of the random profile results, like we start with any arbitrary thing, then you can stabilize it very easily. I mean, utilizing this, you can actually stabilize the system, and then eventually kind of, uh, this is the type of control that you need for, for getting this performance. This is just a one glimpse of thing, we have tested for many things there. Now, I was talking that, okay, this is also possible to do design then approximate, so again, one more philosophy. So we talked about, well, so if, so if a system dynamics can be given a control FI in nonlinear partial differential equation, then how do you actually do that? So eventually the goal is not to just regulate it, in other words, just take it to zero, that was not the ambition, but you can actually play around with any desired profile as well. Across Y, you can talk about any desired profile and you can actually track it also. Okay? The desired profile itself can vary with time. So can you really do all that basically, right? So if you do that, then okay, we talked about some sort of a, you know, error ball, it's also some error integral sort of thing, and then drove the entire error integral to zero, basically, like right? the philosophy, philosophy of dynamic inversion, basically. So you design an error ball, which is integral error ball, and then enforce that the error ball is driven towards zero in the, by, by putting a positive definite gain. So essentially, you, but then the question is, it is also a, a continuous time controller, a continuous in space controller as well. So we cannot really talk about a single controller here. There are like multiple infinite combinations there. So we have to go back to the calculus of variation philosophy and then talk about some of these results there. And again, you can skip it all that, but essentially there are, there are issues like uh, discrete actuators, continuous actuators, and things like that. Discrete actuator is not this one. This is what it is. So eventually we applied that for some sort of a kind of a temperature control problem. You can see this is a conduction part, convection part, and radiation part, right? All the three things are available there. And then eventually this is a fin problem. So essentially a lot of heat radiation fin and all that, right? When you talk about uh, that hot liquid inside and then heat generation outside and all that, heat, heat dissipation outside. So this is your ultimate objective is to have a root temperature a little bit high, but the fin tip temperature should be much lesser, basically, right? So starting from any arbitrary profile, if you do that. So this is some of the results again, so temperature history, eventually it becomes like that, what you really require, and associated control is that way. Now this is another story that I'll just quickly go through some of the, some of the other things, basically. That is the glimpse of that, basically. So again, utilizing that, there are people have done something. Utilizing the same philosophy, there is a thought process of designing an estimator as well. In other words, can you really talk about a nonlinear filter design for doing that? Too? That is also possible. We are, we are exploring that basically. Okay. Now, when I came back here, there was another thing that we talked about. We have talked about DI, okay, the dynamic inversion here, and then talked about SNSE. Now, can you really combine the two? We talk about uh, SNSE aided DI. So, what's the reason? The NDI is called nonlinear dynamic inversion. Whereas now remember all these adaptive critique, SNSE, all that were typically meant for regulation problem, where you don't talk about uh, tracking a signal basically. Okay? The reason being, you don't know what is the tracking signal required, right? Whatever is your guidance also in the outer loop, that's the tracking signal for the inner loop. You cannot predict a priori. If you cannot predict a priori, how can you train a network like that? Okay? So, so because of that, there, is, there was a thought process. Yeah, there's pros of you know, this uh, SNSE. There are some positive effects uh, for, uh, for this adaptive critique. There are some negative part. And of course, if you go to NDI, there are positive and there are negative as well, okay? This is positive part of SNSE, I don't want to read it out, okay? Then negative part of SNSE. Then you go to the other part of the design, which is uh, there are some positive part and there's a negative part, okay? Can you really talk about positive-positive combination, basically, right? Positive part from here and positive part of here. That cross-fertilization of ideas, that's why I talk about that. So we talk about that, and then that is what led to this SNSE added NDI. And this is a single network where so, so the idea here is something like this, okay, right, again. Okay. Let's not see, NDI lock talks about gains basically, right? Your nonlinear dynamic inversion, those of you know, it also talks about only PID type of gains. So K1, K2, K3, like that, actually, there's a closed form formula that, uh, that, 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 this is what you talked about, right? Uh, just a little before I talked about this. Okay, this is the error dynamics that we want to enforce. And that's the gain that you need to design. Now the question is, can you design this gain in such a way that in the regulator class, reduced regulator class of problems, the performance of this NDI will be exactly same as SNSE. Okay? Because SNSE talks about regulation, which is a subset of tracking, the, where the tracking signal is zero, basically, right? So that way. So when you do that, can you really fit these gains in such a way so that it can perform like that? So that is the whole idea there. We talked about something there, then gain optimization happened. This gain optimization is done offline, and then eventually you can take this gain and now the DI formula is ready to get it into the tracking class of problems, basically. So that is what you have done, that extension there. And then <laughs> there's something called, uh, okay, that's the, that's, the, that's the other philosophy, right? Then you talk the next philosophy. When you talk about dynamically re-optimized SNSE, so a doctor SNSE, we call that that way. So what is, what is dynamically re-optimized? Well, all these things that we talked about is model-based so far. 
So the model cannot be really perfect, basically, right? So the model can have an approximation there. So there are perfect modeling is difficult. Uh, so robust control philosophy kicks in, adaptive control, click, uh, I mean, philosophy kicks in like that. So the idea here is, suppose you've taken this as a system dynamics, but the parameter is not really 2, but 2.1. If it's 2.1, then you live with this system dynamics unknown part of it. Now this unknown part, can you capture it well? Okay? So that is where this adaptive control kicks in, and the model reference adaptive control, we talked about this as a basis function, this as a weight, you can do wonderful things there. <coughs> and again, we don't talk about this system dynamics, now we talk about an unknown, unknown part of disturbance function, estimated using a network, basically, neural network. So this, if we do that, then if you estimate that, remember now this is nominal part of it, the lambda required for that is actually different from that, and they talk about the additive part of it. Lambda K2 has to come from somewhere else. Lambda K1 is already designed with, based on SNS, basically. So we get into that, and then this is the architecture that pops up. So essentially, you talk about lambda 1 plus lambda 2 will give you the lambda. That will give you to certain, certain things. There, there is an unknown disturbance function approximation using Lyapunov theory and things like that. But remember, this Lyapunov theory that you see in the literature will only approximate the function. But remember, in optimal control, we talk about lambda dot as well, co-static question, which is a partial, different, partial function of del S by del X. So when del S by del X kicks in, there is a del F by del U also kicks in here, right? Del, right? del F by del X plus del D H by del X. So that del D H by del X also needs to be captured, and that is what this fellow will do. This network is trained in such a way that not only it approximates the function, it also approximates the Jacobian of the function, basically. So that is the, that's the key thing that we can get into. So there's again, the, we went through this architecture, published a little bit, and things like that. There are some of these, you know, these nonlinear control problems, and nonlinear Van der Poel oscillator, things like that. That's the demonstration case. Now get into that. So if you really have this nom nominal controller, it I mean, kind of uh, performs very well. If you simply apply SNSE for a disturbance-induced plant, then of course it doesn't perform well, right? It will keep on oscillating around that and all that. Okay? But if you do happen to the doctor SNSE part, then probably it, it will perform that way, okay, the solid line, basically. So it's much, much better, basically. So that, that is what we have published. And of course, in a conclusion sense, uh, uh, adaptive critic and uh, SNSE are very good nonlinear optimal synthesis techniques, but only applicable for regulator problems. Okay? So DR SNSE is a powerful nonlinear technique for robust optimal control, where you have some uncertainty of system dynamics in the form of parameter, in the form of uh, un unknown uh, algebraic functions in the system dynamics, things like that. That's an extension that done here in IAC. We've also done this SNSC aided NDI. By the way, this SNS aided, uh, SNSC aided NDI happened to be one of the PhD thesis of a student from Wichita State University. So she came here and then spent some time in our lab for about a six months time, and then went back and uh, extended theory and things like that. Then we also talked about DR snack aided NDI and several other things basically that way. So these are, these are some of the challenging problems uh, we've uh, solved, solving, will solve, and that legacy will continue. Some of these uh, publications, uh, and of course, uh, this is, this is uh, Farooq is right now in the meeting. Gurunath is there as a, as a faculty colleague in, in electrical department there. And of course, these are some of the recent things that you have done. This is that Wichita State University, this is a student, now graduated long way. So he's actually working in US uh, right now. And uh, he is actually a scientist in DRDO, okay? and in missile complexity is there. So this is all about the, uh, the glimpse of adaptive critic in SNSE and further extensions what you have done in, in IAC and all that. That's all I want to talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, this session will not probably talk about questions and all, so let's leave it there. We can talk, to, uh, talk about questions and all a little later, basically. That way. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on. And uh, any of you want to share some memories again? Maybe Maruti, what about? You know, you know him very, very well, so why not? In fact, uh, Professor Maruti Akala works in university right now in, in University of Texas, Austin, where Dr. Bala had his PhD as well. He, he has done his PhD from UT Austin. You can take a mic and talk. Or come, come over. No, no, come over. Come over. It's better. No, come over. This, this will work. It's already on. everyone. I, I don't know if I can say that uh, Dr. Bala knew me very well, uh, but I certainly had the pleasure and privilege of being touched by him and his grace and warmth. Um, first off, uh, my first memories of meeting him in person, uh, of course I read a lot of his work as a student myself, uh, but the first time I met him was uh, uh, at the uh, Yale uh, University Learning uh, and Adaptive Systems Workshop 
which uh, Professor Narendra at Yale used to organize uh, every two years. It was an invited workshop and he would very carefully uh, uh, look and uh, uh, decide who he wants to attend. Uh, and he certainly wanted to make sure that those were people who were uh, uh, doing uh, 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 highly impactful work in adaptive and learning systems. Um, uh, so Dr. Bala was uh, attending that workshop uh, and uh, I got invited for the very first time in my life to go there and I was so pumped and thrilled uh, for just being able to go there uh, and I bumped into Dr. Bala Krishnan uh, Bala um, in an elevator so I gingerly walked up and introduced myself uh, this uh, you know relatively young promising young man uh, uh, a faculty member at UT Austin and uh, and certainly uh, reminded him that uh, so I was there where uh, he got his degree um, I, he was uh, he was extremely kind I'm in India now uh, I know a lot of us uh, have our uh, uh, Mahabharata uh, figured out I can't count myself as uh, his uh, Ekalavya student uh, in a way that uh, he uh, he, he was uh, warm and forthcoming and he offered me all help and all mentoring uh, that I could get as a young faculty member uh, going through the tenure ranks. Uh, he, he would even encourage me to send my uh, proposal drafts so that he could read them and provide me uh, his uh, comments and suggestions that I, I think I, I took great lessons that, uh, you know, that helped me even today. Uh, and, uh, and we speak uh, a lot about uh, impacts of the university, so I can certainly say that uh, we at UT Austin and certainly my department, uh, we are proud of uh, everything that uh, Dr. Bala has accomplished uh, after he studied at our place uh, through his uh, highly impactful career. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Maruti. Okay, friend. Well, this uh, series of uh, memory will not be complete unless we give some uh, some podium to the current existing senior faculties of this institute. Uh, Professor Tuli, maybe? Uh, whoever knows you, I mean, no, no one can be better than you. You never met him. Okay, fine. Anybody else from the university who would like to talk from the SNU University? Professor, we can call Navin, maybe. Navin, Navin knows him very well. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, will uh, anyone else would like to Professor Radavali? You know him? Okay. You can speak from there as well. They give the mic to me. Well, all I can say is that uh, I'm kind of very uh, blessed to again have met him uh, during some of my AAA. SciTech conferences. At that time, it was not a SciTech. But yes, I was definitely, uh, I mean, uh, touched by his uh, uh, kind of uh, philanthropic deeds. I never imagined that uh, such a university uh, was, will be built uh, with his kind of uh, uh, insight and vision. So I'm really overwhelmed with that. And then I'm glad that I made this trip. Originally, I was not really ready to make a trip. I was here in India for only three months back. But now I feel very, very happy that I became a part of this uh, celebrating his uh, accomplishment. So all I can say is that, yes, I'm kind of, uh, I'm glad that I have kind of uh, had an opportunity to be a colleague of his. And I do now recall in one of the uh, SciTech meetings, he was saying, I'm going to establish a university in India. Then uh, he was even asking me about what kind of uh, um, help I can give or something like that. So uh, it's amazing that now I see his vision ful fulfilled like this. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I think on behalf of all the uh, future generation, uh, we should be very, very, very uh, happy that uh, people are people like Bala are there to make these things happen. I'm kind of overwhelmed. And then I hope uh, maybe now I'm getting some ideas as to what we can contribute later on in our lives here. Thank you so much. Again, I'm happy to be getting this opportunity. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and of course, uh, probably those of you who like to speak, we'll give you just one more chance at the end of one more talk. 
and one more talk is also superficial of course and then uh, uh, means are you there you have to unmute means are you there or it's too late in the us probably uh, yes, yes I, i'm here i'm okay, here so quickly <clears throat> get uh, quickly get started he is uh, professor mingzin and uh, he is actually working in the same state means university of missouri and one of the cities that i used to love it actually in uh, columbia missouri columbia so that is where he is working and he will give a small presentation again about his work and work around his work basically so, means over to you okay um you, you can share your screen and get started can you share your screen yeah i'm i'm doing that All right. Put it on full screen, maybe. Can you, can you see my screen? Yeah, we do. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Mingxing. Um, I'm a professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at University of Missouri. Uh, so I would like to thank uh, Sergio and Dr. Party for organizing this uh, special session in memory of Dr. Balakrishnan. Uh, so, as one of Dr. Bala's uh, students, it's great to have this opportunity to share with uh, his past students, uh, colleagues, and uh, uh, his family uh, some of my memory of working with Dr. Bala. I worked with Dr. Bala as his uh, PhD student from 1998 to 2002, and then his postdoc until 2006. When I first met him in his office, uh, he was very excited to introduce his research. I can feel his passion and ambition to promote his research, although I did not quite understand what he was talking about at that time uh, because of my language barrier and the lack of knowledge in these research areas. Uh, but generally, I understood that Dr. Bala was doing optimal control and he developed a new method called Adaptive Critic Neural Network to solve the challenging uh, optimal control problem. Uh, so I also realized that uh, almost all of his graduate students were working on this Adaptive Critic from different aspects for different applications. Uh, but uh, however, Dr. Bala would like me to explore a new nonlinear optimal control method at that time called state-dependent Ricard equation, the SDRE technique. So that was my starting point of my research. <clears throat> uh, along this path, uh, I developed another approximate optimal control approach called the Theta-D control uh, as my PhD dissertation, uh, which can uh, improve the SDRE control by reducing its uh, computational complexity. So the title of my talk is Approximate Optimal Control and Estimation, uh, State-Dependent Ricardi Equation and a Theta D-Based Optimal Control and Beyond. Okay. <clears throat> so my talk will be uh, in two parts. Uh, in the first part, I will uh, talk about the work with Dr. Bala at Bala. Uh, mainly focus on the state-dependent Ricardi equation technique and uh, the theta D control technique and uh, their applications in the guidance and control of aerospace vehicles. Uh, in the second part, uh, I will talk about some extensions along Dr. Bala's line of research. And uh, so uh, after I graduated, um, I became an independent researcher as a professor in the university. So I led uh, many of my grad students and postdocs to do to continue doing research in optimal control and applications. <clears throat> so as we know, uh, Dr. Bala uh, has been doing uh, research um, focusing on optimal control. So uh, the optimal control problem is basically to minimize some. Uh, a cost functionals are subject to a nonlinear constraint, uh, usually uh, differential equations to describe the dynamics. And uh, so the fundamental theories of optimal control is 
based on the uh, either Pontryagin's uh, minimum principle or uh, dynamic programming. So as we know, uh, there are many challenges uh, using these uh, two theories, uh, the optical theories to design a controller, uh, such as the no analytical solution, especially for uh, nonlinear systems. Uh, the convergence of a numerical solution. Ming, Ming, um, one second. Your slide is not moving. So, are you moving the slides or slide is still slide number one? Oh, still number one. Yeah, the very cover slide. Can you can you unshare and share it again? Maybe you share your screen so we can whatever you see we can see. Uh, let me see. You unshare it and then share it again if you got it. Can you see the the moving of slides? No, it's, the slides are not moving. So just unshare your slides. Just stop sharing. Stop sharing and reshare your slides. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. It should work. Yeah. Okay. Let now, me now start it. Share it again. Then share your entire screen. That's the best way to switch it out quickly. Yeah. Put it so can you see my screen now? Uh, put it on full screen. Full screen is not there. Put it on presentation mode, yeah, full screen. Share your screen, Ming. It's, it's very easy to do that. You can Not? No, now it's blank screen. It's not there? It's blank screen. Just share hmm. your screen, full screen. That will be better. Unless you want to hide something. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Just unshare it again and share it again. If you, This is where people will lose interest otherwise. Just quickly do that. You have the PowerPoint with us. We can play from here. Can you? It's a problem. That's why. Yeah. Just unshare it and share it again, and share your screen, not a, not a window. Yeah, I, I know, but I cannot find. Uh... All all of you are Zoom people, not Teams people. That's. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I used to use Zoom. I'm not so good at. <laughs> Teams. Just, just share it again because I think it's we're getting late here, and people are, we need to conclude it very fast. That's all. Can you see this slides now? Not really. It's coming. Yeah. Can you move the slides? Slide is not moving again. It feels like bad. Right. I, have uh, I have to move so people cannot you have to move so I'm moving this <laughs> uh, this is a problem you cannot here. move up, uh, just, I'm telling you just unshare your screen share your full screen don't share your window the first one Screen on the top is written as screen, right? That one, you, that one you say. That one you click, and then you mean the uh, the Teams screen? Yeah. No, after you after you hit the share screen, below there will be like screen and window. You just select the screen, not the window. Again, the same thing coming. You, can, you cannot uh, we cannot see the slides here okay you tell me to click it you cannot no i cannot see the slides i mean sli slide will not move um. yeah i think we, we figure it out we'll we'll see about it later on i i mean sergio you have something else no okay so can you tell me when to move then i can move at least I think five slides are there. I can move, and then you can talk. All right.
that you can simply talk a little bit without presentation maybe Mr. Joshi. What do you mean set set a screen? I I did. Well, whatever I you did see, set whatever you see on the on your screen, you should be able to see. And then, can you move your slides? You cannot see the slides moving. If you just see one slide, that's all. Ah, now it is something. Can you can you change it again? Can you see it moving? Okay, so what we do here, and there is a technical problem out here, so you can you can uh, probably send it over mail. Huh? I can say it, but then what will they think? So let's go to who is doing chess, otherwise there is a lag here. Okay, maybe, uh, I mean, if you don't mind, could we... I uh, what I do is I will uh, I will take you out of the meeting. Can you join us back again? Maybe that will work. Yeah. Okay, problem. So unless that uh, the technical, you are supposed to be here, Ming. Yeah, I'm here, but not here means here in, in Delhi, not uh, not in Missouri. <laughs> I can, I can okay. see everything well in my on my side, but okay, I don't know you, what can happened. You, can, can you go? Can you change your slide? Okay, sure. Now it should be okay for me. Can you change your slide? Put put it on your screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you see the moving? Yeah. Slide number two now. Can you do that? Can you move? Number two, right? Where you talk about the work with Dr. Bala and Prola. And yeah. Uh, right. Keep talking. Yeah, we are, we figured it out. Keep keep talking. Yes, okay. Very good. Can you see the slide moving? Keep, keep talking means we are done. Okay. Keep talking. Yeah, we are all set. Keep talking. Okay. Keep talking. I mean, can you see the slides moving? Slide number two right now. Student number two. Mm. So it's not moving. I did. Yeah, but then there is a there is a team step, you know. Okay, can you do it again, maybe? Number one. Okay. Uh, discussion is discussion only. It was it was not a discussion. No, this will not solve the problem. Can you see? Slide number two now. Any, anything more in that? Yeah. Slide number three. But it's not displayed correctly on my side. It's everything is messed up. That's okay. Yeah, just you just uh, kind of manage it. That's okay. If messed up is because of mess type equations and all that, that's just okay. Leave it. Uh. Yeah, can you go back to your presentation and quickly finish it? People are hungry. We are already going to lunch over here. Sorry, I, I, all the slides are messed up. I cannot read it. Okay. I cannot even read it. All right, so we'll assume that this, uh, this talk is presented. What we do here is just give a presentation recording. We'll share with the participants later. So if you want to talk a little bit, you can talk a little bit for five more minutes, couple of minutes. And give an overview orally with, without any slides, and then record a video, and then we'll share with the participants. Okay. okay maybe I I can uh, uh, do it offline, yeah, and uh, right. offline you record it, and then send the video, and we'll share with the, all the participants. Don't worry about it. Just talk a little bit about your work, about your uh, couple of minutes, what you did, and then we'll wind up the session. Okay, I, I will record it and send it uh, to you after that, okay? Right. right, so you talk about your work for two minutes, just talk orally. Without slides, just talk. Just talk? Yeah. Okay.
Uh, so uh, when I work with Dr. Ballard, um, I mainly work on the SDRE method and the theta D method, and uh, uh, then we successfully applied uh, them in uh, to many uh, different aerospace guidance control problems. And uh, after uh, many extensions, uh, including uh, improve the uh, theory of the SDRE method and theta D method, um, and uh, uh, also along the uh, Dr. Bala's uh, missile guidance work, uh, we also made some uh, extension for the missile guidance law design, and uh, also we make extension to the uh, SDRE based uh, filtering design and uh, we designed some uh, nonlinear estimation uh, techniques um, yeah so these are some uh, extensions after uh, working with Dr. Bala yeah all right thank you all right. thank you thank very you. much thank sorry you. for this technical thank problem you. you can record it offline and do it again so we'll share it with all of everyone okay all right. Be on. Be in the meeting. Uh, we, we. I mean, we'll be concluding the session very soon. You can on share your screen. You can stop your screen. Screen sharing. Okay. Perfect. So all of you online can come on the video if you. I mean, whoever is there. Okay. If you can come online on the video, probably so we can see if you can listen. All right. Uh, so we. This is almost about the end of the session. Uh, of course. Uh, you want to talk anything, Sadia? Nishant, good to see you again. Ka Karthik is still there. Okay, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, thanks, Karthik, Nishant, uh, Ming, and uh, whoever is there online. It's very late for you. I understand that. But then uh, it is always a memory. One day you can always uh, compensate this to your friend Rashmar as well. And when you keep visiting India, probably you can keep visiting uh, this university as well to have a first hand feeling of uh, what he and his brother have done together. Uh, all right, so let's uh, want to talk more. Yeah, we have a little time. Okay. So I think all of you must be hungry, but uh, we are always uh, having a little bit of rush time and all that. So this con this uh, concludes our session. Uh, so we'll uh, reassemble again at two o'clock for the for a plenary talk. That will be again. I have to talk. Yeah, that that's the schedule. Because this was initially, I, I did not agree because I was the, one of the general says not a good idea to talk, but there was so much of pressure from all the organizers to, to listen about our Chandrayaan story. Knowing that, I actually I had given a recent uh, recent plenary in GNC talk, GNC technical talk in in US. There was a lot of uh, requests on me rather to kind of oblige out of uh, out of protocol sort of thing, if you say. So we'll do that. But before the before ending the session, I will tell you my most emotive uh, moments with Dr. Bala, and then you share. So essentially, when you decided to come back at that point of time, we went through some sort of a little bit of financial scam. I mean, that is a very bad memory for us. We understand that. So we had to extend the story. I have to extend the stay for a little more months, about uh, four or five months. We had to extend the stay to compensate for whatever financial loss we had. That some of the, some of us uh, were close to probably know about it. But at the, at the end of the day, when it, the time was there to come back, he told, look, why don't you take one more extension? So we, I'll support you for one more year. Why don't you just, I will request the IAC. IAC, I just don't worry about that part of it. Job will not go. But can you stay there for a few more months, basically? I told, well, yes, no, I have stayed here for six and a half years already. And then let's not delay too much because that may actually hurt our IAC journey, basically, that way. So he understood that. And after all that, uh, I mean, that car story and the Lexus story, we, the time was there. So we end up in a night meeting, by the way, around 9 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock in, in his office. And uh, probably <coughs> I handed over that car key and they grabbed me uh, and it literally cried basically. All right, so that was, <laughs> that was a pick of the moment. But anyway, so with that little memory, probably we'll stop here. And then you can know that uh, there are many more things there basically. Okay. So this story is all about that. But then uh, this university will miss uh, more than what, what we miss him basically. But anyway, the life is finite. We all understand that. <laughs> okay, right, that way. But we as wish that life could have been a little more uh, generous to him. That people do live for 1995 years nowadays. And at least about 80 plus, uh, you should have expected it. But uh, having said that, it's, uh, it's time to move on. Uh, but then uh, he will remain with, uh, with this university forever. 
and in our heart forever so with that let us uh, conclude this session i welcome all of you to to come forward for the lunch and reassemble here at 2 o'clock for the other journey thank you very much Guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, everybody. Mr. Al Nishandi, one quick question. Thanks a lot. Yeah, th yeah th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pari, Ming, and uh, uh, Sergio, everybody. Uh, Karthik, Vijay, uh, good to see you all. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to keeping keeping in touch with everybody. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Please do. I will send Thank all you. the information to everybody. Well, everybody has Excel. Let's 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 not wait. You know, twenty five years. Let's talk to Kim. We'll do a meeting or something. You know, with everybody at a reasonable time. <laughs> Absolutely. Not not, not late by time. Send some content to us. We'll buy it. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure out time and trying to get everybody at the same time. There's a lot of people that actually. Couldn't, couldn't join because of really what time is over there? Well, probably over there at Karthik's time is not that too bad. It's like like midnight. Yeah, right. It's what it's twelve forty. I'm I'm uh, Pacific, so it's not too bad for what me. What about you, Nishan? Uh, two forty. Two forty. <laughs>